what is the health of today's soldiers and is this a concern to our military? Well, it's nothing I have not looked into recently, the health of the soldiers, but when I did last time, it was pathetic. You know, somewhere as many as 80% of young men and women who would be eligible for military service are not physically fit. And uh, in the military, the figure I remember is 53% of these soldiers are overweight. So, you know, it, it worries me to say the least. Do you look at our American soldiers, say, compared to the, well, I don't want to get anybody offended, but say the, the, the North Korean soldiers. And there's a big difference in, in, in uniform size. And I think it wouldn't take much to assume that the, the, the thin, strong, wiry guy is going to do really well against the big, fat guy. So, yeah, I'm worried about it. I think it's terrible that we've sent our military out there with, uh, with less than the ability that they should have to fight our battles. Absolutely. But, you know, the meat and dairy industry, they can, they can kill anybody. They, they, got, they, got, they got the megaphone. They got the money. Can you expand on your thoughts on the impact diet has on the environment? I've had a, I, I'm very interested in, in diet and climate change. And, you know, I am unfortunately one of the few people who's interested. Uh, for example, Al Gore, who did the uh, 2006 documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, which turned us all on to the, the effect of what we're doing on the global warming. Even Greta Thunberg, who's the young lady who has rallied millions of people around the world. She's a vegan herself, but she really doesn't push it hard. And then one of the more concerning things was a piece I saw last week on 60 Minutes with Bill Gates. Bill Gates, uh, who I've always considered one of the pioneers in public health, and uh, so much so very interested in the environment. Bill Gates was on the 60 Minutes show, and he talked about how we had to look at Every, every possibility, because we're so far gone as far as the global warming picture goes, we can't leave any, any idea unturned. And then on that particular show, he sat and defended his cheeseburger. You know, what you eat is very personal, I understand, but when it comes to destroying your children's future, I think you ought to try and see behind your own dinner plate. Anyway, uh, he's very defensive, Bill Gates is, and I'm very disappointed in him because of this issue. He said we had to look at everything. Well, let's look at the fact that uh, uh, Livestock's Long Shadow, which was a WHO report published in 2006, said that uh, livestock accounted for 18% of all greenhouse gases. And that's compared to 14% for transportation. The World Watch Institute came back a few years later and analyzed their data including a lot of things that needed to be included. And they came to the conclusion that the livestock industry contribu contributes to more than 51% of our destructive uh, activities. Uh, the livestock, we're talking about, about beef and pork and chicken and even the farm fish industries. And uh, then we have the Eat Lancet Commission, which published uh, some of their more important results in the year 2019. And they explained that if we're going to save planet Earth, and we only got a few years if we have that to do it, we have to pay attention to the food. You know, more and more people are coming out and saying, look, you, if we don't pay attention to the food, it doesn't matter how many clean cars that you put on the roads. It's too late, folks. And so we have to change our diets. And so the Eat Lancet Commission came out in March of 2020 and told us that if we switch to a vegan diet, we could uh, decrease our greenhouse gas productions by half. 50%. And other researchers that are uh, involved in this particular prediction say that a vegan diet can reduce greenhouse gases by as much as 80%. So, you know, we really have to use this card, the diet card. Uh, otherwise, we're all, out of, we're all out of cards in the deck to play. And nobody's paying attention to it is what I'm trying to say. And so I've taken this up as a banner and put as much effort as I can into getting people to understand the connection. We are destroying our environment with the fork and spoon. We're deforesting our, our rainforest. Uh, we're producing huge amounts of greenhouse gases. And it's, it's you know, it's got to change. The planet's worth saving. This is all I spend my time thinking about. I spent 44 years trying to figure out how to get people to change to a healthy diet to save their own personal lives. 
since my first grandson was born 17 years ago, I've had a passion for the environment. It's kind of interesting, the same passion that, that uh, causes people to be healthy in their own right to cure chronic diseases. We published, uh, we published scientific data that proves that we, will, uh, we are able to cure these diseases like obesity, type two diabetes, arthritis, et cetera. Uh, in, addition, in addition to that, in addition to the impacts on the environment that I just told you about, also there's another impact on COVID-19, which could open people's eyes. You know, COVID-19 has been around for a year and it's caused people to change and to realize that we're capable of changing dramatic changes and they happened overnight and we're alive and we're well. And, you know, I know there's a lot, a lot of suffering going on, but we've changed. And some of the things we did is we decreased our airline travel, good for the environment and travel on the road. And, you know, we decreased greenhouse gases by 10% in just one year. But the thing to know is that there's a important personal card that people can play. You only have two tools in your toolbox to keep you from going on from mild to asymptomatic disease to very serious disease, where you end up in the hospital, where you end up on a ventilator, where you end up dying. The two tools. One is uh, public health, which is uh, you know washing your hands and wearing a mask and and uh, social distancing. The the other tool that is too seldom talked about. Just like with the other subjects I just talked about, chronic disease and the environment, they, they won't even talk about diet and COVID-19. We've known since before this virus came to the United States or Europe, when it was still in China, that people who have comorbid conditions, which are diabetes, too fat, you know, people who have the Western diseases, they're the ones that go on and die from this disease. Uh, you know, Anthony Fauci, told Congress in the summer of 2020 that the only way you go on to more serious diseases is to have these cold morbid factors, which we cure with a simple starch-based diet. So, you know, we have, we have three different avenues to approach this from, and hopefully we wake up.